There are many great free tools to allow you to manage your MySQL databases, but one of the simplest and easiest to get started with is PHP MyAdmin, a free web application which you can download from www.phpmyadmin.net. You can either go to this site and download the most recent version, or you can use the version that I've included in the free exercise files that come with this course. To use that version, go to the free exercise files, to PHP MyAdmin. The entire web application is in this very small zip file. Extract the zip file. Then move the resulting folder, PHP MyAdmin with the version number, to your Apache document root. To do that, I'll press Command N to create a new finder window. I'll go to the Mac hard drive root, then to Library, Web Server, Documents. And then I'm going to drag this folder into the document root. After it's been dragged into place, I'll rename it with simply PHP MyAdmin. You can name the folder anything you want, but by naming it simply PHP MyAdmin, all lowercase, it will make it very easy to access from a web browser. Now let's check a few things before we try to fire it up. Go to your System Preferences dialog, and from there to the MySQL pane, and make sure that MySQL is running. Then you can close that dialog. You're done with that for now. Then go to a browser and navigate to the URL http colon slash slash localhost slash php myadmin. You should see this login dialog. If you try to log in right now, it's not going to work, even if you type in the correct username and password for your MySQL installation. I'll type in root and then my password and click go and I'll see an error saying cannot log into the MySQL server. There's also a very obscure message down at the bottom. The mcrypt extension is missing. Please check your PHP configuration. All of these problems can be easily solved with a very small configuration file. And I've provided the most minimal version of this configuration file, again, in the free exercise files. I'll go to the free exercise files, to the PHP MyAdmin folder, and I'm going to use this file config.inc underscore mac.php. Now I want to leave the original file in place, so I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. Then I'll go back to my document root folder, to PHP my admin, and I'll paste by pressing Command V. Now I'm going to rename the file, taking out the underscore mac. I'll click on the file once and then press return, and then remove underscore mac so that the actual name of the file is config.inc.php. Next, I'm going to edit it. You can use any text editor for this purpose. And I'll show you that this file has some basic settings in it. The socket configuration on the fourth line is referring to something called a socket file, which is created automatically by MySQL when it starts up on your system. On Mac OS X, this file is in the TMP folder. You shouldn't have to change that line at all. The next line refers to the username. I'm using root, the administrative user that's created automatically when you install MySQL. And again, you can use that for local development. Next is the password. I have simply password, but you should change this to reflect your MySQL password. The next item, auth type, changes to a different authentication model named config. And this will remove that confusing mcrypt error that you saw earlier. And finally, there's a configuration item named Allow User Drop Database. By default, you as an individual user won't be able to drop or delete your own databases. I've reset that value to true. So if you need to make changes to the user and password, go ahead and do it and save your changes, but leave everything else alone. And then close your text editor. Now to test, go back to your browser. Once again, type localhost slash admin. And when it opens, it may show the same screen, but press Command R to refresh the screen, and now PHP MyAdmin should open correctly. To test and make sure that you can create and delete databases, I've provided an SQL file. First, click Databases and create a new database. I'm going to name it Explore California and click Create. Then over on the left, I'll click on my new database. Now I'm going to import some structure and data from an SQL file. I'll click Import at the top, choose File, 
Then in my free exercise files folder, I'll choose explorecalifornia.sql. I'll scroll down to the bottom and click go. And I should see the message that the database has been imported correctly. I can go over to the left side and see the database in my list. And if the database is selected, I should be able to browse the data. Now test that you can drop the database. Up at the top of the screen, I'll go to the list of my pages and I'll click Explore California. And this takes me back to the database page. I'll go to the Operations screen. I'll take a look over on the left and I should see a link that allows me to drop the database. This is the tool that was enabled by that additional configuration in the configuration file. I'll click the link and confirm and now the database is gone. So that's how you get started with PHP MyAdmin. I should caution that the minimal configuration that I provided is perfectly suitable for local development. If you want to put PHP MyAdmin on your production PHP server, that is a server that's available to the public, check the PHP MyAdmin documentation for the recommended configuration for a more secure installation.